Hey, this is Dr. Drew, and you were listening to This Life with Bob Foy and Dr. Drew. Here we are. Today, our host is Mike Carano, sitting in for Bob. Mike, welcome. Hello. And, and we have a very special guest. Her name is Grace, and I'll tell you the whole story how we got to Grace. Grace, hi. Hi. And tell everybody who you are and what you do. Sure. Um, I run a YouTube channel called Grace Report, youtube.com slash Grace Report, where I give episode recaps and general commentary on the drama that surrounds, you know, people from shows like Teen Mom, 90 Day Fiance, Love After Lockup, and things like that. And where are you? Where am I right now? I yeah. live in Canada. Canada. You're in Canada. And, and do you, yeah. are you in school? Are you, are you working? What do you do for a living? That kind of thing? I work. I handle communications and public relations strategies in the tech world. Yeah. Interesting. So uh, <laughs> the reason we're talking to you is uh, my wife, the producer of this show, at First Lady of Love, caught, caught wind of you. I don't know how. You tweeted or something, and then she started watching, and she was literally walking around our house with you – on her phone going and she's as she's going going i love this girl this great i like this grace and she's so good I, and I, you listened for like a half an hour didn't you or an hour susan you would sit, oh, get susan's headphone on yeah and i i i, I know celebrity <laughs> yeah, you, you're she, gonna be famous she lady. knows quality which is i'm on. gonna make you famous and she, and, yeah. she, and she this morning as i was getting out of bed she was still under the influence of your podcast and she goes <laughs> and she goes you know you need to address the teen mom thing more often you don't talk about it will you talk about it? i said why don't you get grace on the you never board? do i know okay i never We've do. never talked about it on this life okay so I said, get Grace on the horn and let her ask all the questions she wants to ask, and maybe that way I'll, oh. I'll talk about it. Um, but before I let you, let you loose on me, let me say two things. Uh, mm-hmm. One is we are having this conversation before the second half of the reunion of the OG group is airing. And I am essentially embargoed from talking about anything until it airs. So though I can talk in sort of general ideas about, say, for instance, the Farrah interview that you're going to see soon. That's number one. And then number two, I, I want to warn you about <laughs> – well, you ask me questions. You ask me questions. Wait, about, you can't leave it. Well, I, the, well the, war- the warning is – what I, what I, what, I pop, just pop, got a teen pregnant, so the show is <laughs> going to take a weird twist. <laughs> Probably the reason I – I am I, a pregnant teen. <laughs> Marilyn Rice Also Cup. a weird twist. We'll get her in here soon. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, the, the reason I probably don't talk about the show is there's so much misconception about what people are, are watching. I mean, you're watching these little ice pick moments when a crew shows up and asks a bunch of questions of these women and and sort of maybe hang around and show some footage of their lives. And there's just tons about their life that's never portrayed. The the last time I did a a reunion, and and by the way, all kinds of misconceptions about what I'm doing. I'm hosting a TV show. I happen to also be a doctor, but I'm hosting a TV show. I'm not their doctor. And I couldn't be their doctor. I couldn't do anything medically. That would be, amongst other things, illegal, practicing medicine across state lines. And secondly... but they're already pregnant. Secondly, secondly, (laughs) secondly, they all have... Teams of doctors and social workers, and you'd be amazed what's all involved with everybody, uh, and and that's between them and their medical teams. What you know, what they do and don't do, and how they manage their lives and things. I can't do anything about that. So there's that. That's sort of the reality of what what I'm contending with. So having said all that, now it's your turn. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I know that whenever you film these reunion specials they are done for like hours on end and then they're kind of condensed into um what 45 minutes per part typically two parts so i do get that some things kind of don't make it to air so i guess a few of these questions are kind of did you ever ask about them sure go ahead go ahead i know you know we're still waiting on part two but last year a lot of people were really disappointed to see that You know, it didn't seem to have been mentioned anything about Mackenzie and um, that wedding scene where she allowed Ryan to drive high out of his mind on his way to their wedding, passing out behind the wheel and pretending that she had no clue he was on drugs, even though when she thought the cameras and mics were off, she was like, you know, did you take the Xanax again and things like that. So I find that I personally consider her to be sort of predatory just based on those sorts of things that we've seen about her. Is that something that rubbed you the wrong way? And did you ever mention anything about that on the right. show? So so whenever you have an addict, you have a codependent, right? That just they are always they found in pairs. That's the way they are found. 
And codependents are at differing levels of sophistication, enabling behaviors. I mean, I'm used to severe enabling where people bring drugs into drug units when you're trying when people are trying to get well. What I saw McKenzie doing was someone who really just was in denial and didn't understand what she was contending with. Exactly what was going on or in and around that whole episode, that whole phenomenon you're referring to with him in the car and stuff. There was a thousand and one legal issues that I was warned about and to stay away from it. Uh, okay. So, so there was all kinds of stuff there that legitimately you just can't you just can't get at because it just you mean I, interfere in any way or I wasn't there. Do I don't know what was really right. going down. It, was there laws broken? I don't know. I you know this, this is all that just the, I was advised just stay out of it. Just stay out of it. And so you, I did. yeah. But yeah. do you think though that on the reunion that you kind of could have helped Macy out a little bit when Mackenzie came out with this long letter claiming that she had no clue, even though she all but admitted to it in the exact episode? Again, I because I'm not there. Whatever these things are going on in their real life. I just take I just take things at their face value and try to you know I, I I know I get lied to a ton I know things get distorted my job is not to 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 do anything but kind of take things at face value and try to try to help them tell the story that's that's all we're doing we're trying to discuss I'm not trying to treat them I'm not trying to make them better though let's so, let's look, talk about Macy and uh, Ryan for a second. I I am terribly terribly concerned about Ryan and I did pull Macy aside at the end of the last reunion and said I'm whatever I can do I I'm really um I'm very deeply deeply concerned and if I can be of help uh please let me be. Now no one called me and uh I don't know how things are going. I don't know what's going on in fact. Yeah. And you've heard about his latest sort of arrests and um, that sort of thing as well. Again, is there? We, I don't know what that was. We just don't know. I, I, yeah. I, I, again, there, there. He has a doctor. He has a treating team. A lot of what we discussed on the show. I don't know what went on the air or not. Was whether or not he was misusing the medication that the doctor prescribed to him, or was he actually doing what the doctor told him to do? Uh, mm-hmm. And that was, again, I don't know. He says he's doing what the doctor told him to do. And I said, well, if that's the case, then you need to you know, double down on your treatment and focus on your care. This is dangerous, life-threatening illness. Uh, mm-hmm. Mackenzie you know, got ups- angry and upset that I would ever even suggest that he wasn't doing exactly what the doctor said. But that's her codependency. That's what codependents do. Well, as a drug uh, – you're not a counselor, but as a drug professional, yeah. do, do you think you and other people in your profession are lied to all the – 100% of the time? 100% of the time. Because I've lied to you and you're my friend. Yeah, 100% of the time. <laughs> but, and, and so when doctors get angry that patients lie to them, I, I laugh yeah. at that. If my patients didn't lie to me, they, they shouldn't be seeing me. So my job is try to f- try to figure out what's going on when I'm treating somebody. I'm not treating these guys. I'm just – I know there's going to be distortions. I know there's going to be lies. But let me correct. I, just... I haven't lied, lied to you, but I, we've been drinking before, <laughs> so... and I I finished half a glass of wine. And I'm like, I'm good. And the minute you were gone, I'm like <laughs> – That was in your disease. That's all right. Don't, don't, don't feel shame. Uh, go, go ahead, Grace. All right. Yeah. Um, yeah, I know that. And I, I – you know, I was saying in the episode uh, – recap that I did that I found that you did a really good job at it's hard. poking holes in Ryan's stories. Oh yeah, I know. They walk away like divas and throw their little tantrums, but you did a really good job at poking holes in Ryan's claims about, you know, the drug tests and all these things that just did not add up. Um, in a way where he and Mackenzie just flew way over their heads. They didn't realize that they were being caught in all these lies. Um, but kind of turning gears towards Vera, I know you can't talk too too much about her because yeah. the episode is still pending. Yeah. But how do you feel about the fact that MTV, you know, wanted to fire her for getting back into porn as, a, you know, as opposed to the way that she treats staff instead? We saw that, you know, she pretty much verbally abuses her staff and they didn't really seem to have too much of a problem with that. It was more of an afterthought in their reasons for firing her, which led to a lawsuit. Again, I don't know. I, I you know, I know the production team. It's not MTV now. You're talking about the production team. Um, yeah. And I don't know how they deal with that internally as a human resource issue. Obviously, the treatment is, you know, we all saw how she treated some of these people. And I, I hope, I, I feel certain, because I know the people that run these production teams, that they supported that staff, you know, had some sort of way of helping them manage whatever the consequence of that behavior is. I don't know whether they intervened on Farrah or not. 
I, I don't know because uh, you know I, I don't I really don't even know how that would really work because Farah's not their employee. Uh, she's an employee of, of of MTV, but the production company has its own employees. So those must be internal human resource problems that are separate from the environment in which the producers find themselves. So I don't know the answer to that. I, I don't know how they quite manage that one. Uh, on her, you know, uh, electing to continue with her career in adult entertainment, that was her choice. I don't know. I that, again, that all was that that was all MTV through Morgan Freeman just saying, "Here's your choice. Make your choice," and then we'll uh, end as friends if. Uh, if you know we, we, if you make a choice that doesn't include something that that uh, we will allow continued employ. Yeah. Um, do you find that the show has kind of almost started to run its course? You know, being titled Teen Mom and the women sort of being you know nearing thirty and their children being preteens. Is it healthy that they've been recorded from birth up until this age? Like, do you think it's going to go on almost? For like how much longer? What do you think about the uh, consequences have, that this have, might have on I all have the kids? N- I have no idea. Teen mom, you're 60. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, you might you might expect <laughs> some of these kids are going to have uh, teen pregnancies themselves. I mean, that's kind of the way yeah. that happens. Oh my gosh! Um, <laughs> but but I would tell you, I, I, I the, the thing I I know I that was about, on that show when I was a grandmother, honey. <laughs> <laughs> I you know whether or not these environments are healthy, even healthy for kids and whatnot. I I, I don't even know how to answer that, but. Um, I mean, these are all you know decisions that these people made, and, and that's, this is their life that they have chosen to put on television. But, but the interesting thing to me, um, <clears throat> it was is really that the idea that, that well, not interesting, something that is just never gets identified or, or acknowledged is that in both the shows I've been involved with, in Celebrity Rehab and in Teen Mom. VH1 and MTV goes to tremendous lengths and tremendous expense to provide mental health services for these people. They often don't accept it. They don't want mm-hmm. it. But they go – I've always said they should get up and take a bow for the amount of resources they provide. So these you know, almost every kid there has access to all kinds of resources that they would not have had had their mother not been on these programs. So I don't know. I don't know which is, uh, you know, how these things weigh out in the long run, and no one will ever be able to do the studies properly to to tell. But I do know they get access to a lot of resources they never would have had access to without this. And speaking of that, do you find that the amount of resources they have, both in terms of health and financial, kind of almost cripples them in a way that they don't really understand how to function as regular adults these days? Well, that's an interesting question, right? In other words, does is it spoil them somehow? I mean, you could you could almost argue and that you know Farah is the one that really goes out and works, right? She's the one that yeah. does does lots of jobs and has lots of businesses and things, and the other ones sort of tend to rely on their salaries from MTV. I I don't know the answer to that. Um, my sense, nobody's lazy. I'll guarantee you that. Uh, and whether Are you or not sure about that. <laughs> well, who's lazy? Who's, yeah, how can you guarantee that? Well, who's I, I, I know them pretty well. Who's who you no. call? Who's lazy? <laughs> Tell me, baby. When I think Who's of lazy? Me. I would say Amber is lazy. I would say Caitlin is lazy. I'd say Chelsea is lazy. I would say well, a lot of them are. Lazy. I, I mean, as, you got to remember they they there's some being a teen mom is a marker as a mental health marker. It, it's a marker for mental health issues, and there's a lot of stuff going on that may look like laziness that may be more on the mental health front. Well, all of that can uh, be explained with editing. And editing too. That as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, it's, it's but but people do kind of these guys. These some of these women do maintain a presence in social media and things like that. So they kind of know what they're doing and what they're up to. Um, but most of them work pretty hard doing a lot of stuff, I and mean, some of them work very very hard. Um, I mean, look at Kaylin or Macy, and they just do lots of stuff. And I, and I, I understand what you're saying about Amber. I I've not known her to be a lazy person. She she travels a lot. There's just so much in their life that's going on that you don't see. Uh, and if she gets depressed and ends up two weeks on the couch, then you kind of see that. And you think, oh, that's all she ever does. And it's really not like that. But Gary and Christina both claim that it's more than two weeks, right? They, I think um, this season they were complaining that throughout the whole summer, she only had visited her daughter a total of like, what, three days or something like that? I I, I don't remember that. But uh, yeah, if you say that's what happened, I'm sure. I don't I don't know what went on this summer. 
Susan, did you talk mm-hmm. to Amber? Is Amber okay this summer? Did she have a crisis or anything? She was doing great. She was taking her meds and she was, she, I met her before she got pregnant. We actually yeah. predicted she was going to get pregnant and she. That quickly? Yeah, oh my God. Well, she, <laughs> she, she came on my psychic show with Rebel Colby and she said, you're going to have another baby. And, she, and I looked at her, I go, no, 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 no. <laughs> We're going to give you con- contraceptive advice right now. <laughs> So then, mm-hmm. like six months later, she was pregnant, but she was doing really, really, really well. Super sweet. But, and but, but on uh, top of her life, she was trying to break up with the first boyfriend at the time. Right. And I like the second oh, I, guy. That's he right. Was that that so whole sweet. thing. That whole thing sent her into a spiral. The thing yeah, that but she, but, absolutely. But the yeah. new guy w- is ten times better. He's a well, good guy. Well, but she barely knows him, though. <laughs> that's the problem. I know. But I do know people that know him, and he apparently is a good guy. I've never seen He's the show. Record, and, though, you guys. He's psychic. got a record on him. Uh, women have restraining orders against him for allegedly stalking them like he was going as far as dressing up as the postman or the flower delivery man to get into his ex-girlfriend's like oh. places of work how do you Dr. know all Drew, this that he's not know. a good person your impression is off <laughs> yeah no, it's not an impression it's the legal i only salon. attract sociopaths so. <laughs> i had heard there was something but i heard it also was a long time ago i'm gonna go ups yeah. man to stalk mary lynn <laughs> thank you yeah so how it's do you feel about to, that to because she was just escaping from one abusive relationship and then she got into another one with someone who i don't i don't i'm not saying it's abusive right now but he does have a history of abusing people if you know these restraining orders are to be believed and she's already pregnant by him as well well you're right it was fast but uh, I love, again you, sorry i love that comment if these restraining orders are to be believed <laughs> i'm trying not to laugh it was a given we sort of believe those <laughs> but, but weren't they like weren't they like 50, 50 this years ago though? 25 year jail no, prison sentence is to be believed oh, God, I wish I yeah i think they're that. within the past five years Interesting. Uh, again, I, my job is not to run their lives for them. I, I don't feel in any way. I, I don't do that for anybody. I don't tell them. Well, they we should are or concerned shouldn't. about the opioid problem, right? Well, with Ryan, because yeah, he's, he's, he's going to die. Wait, all of these problems you. stem from them getting pregnant as teenagers well, no, when the, their hormones are flowing. The, teen, the teenage pregnancy is just a marker. <laughs> That's a marker for mental health problems. It's mm-hmm. it's a, it's a symptom. Every teenager wants to have sex. It, but if they get pr- and every teenager has easy access to contraception. When they actually get pregnant, you, you find there's a certain amount of volitional intent in it. You're saying, are you tying the mental health yeah. in with just basic irresponsibility? Yeah. Yeah. But it really doesn't happen as often as you would think for the amount of teens that want to have sex. Right. That's amazing, That's right? right. And so when think they about do, it, right? <laughs> we were driving on the road. We could all be crashing into each other. We don't. We all drive on the road together. <laughs> and, 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 and typically, it's, it's, again, a marker for mental health stuff. Trauma, usually. It's a, Good and, point, So the though. getting Sorry, pregnant is, is, is an attempt to solve a problem, an emotional problem. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I, I'm, I'm not, I just don't take the position. It's just not my position that that I should sit in judgment of the choices they make. I just they just are what they are. They're struggling with life like all of us. They've had you know their life journey, and they've had some significant stressors. They have some some very significant psychiatric issues, and they're trying to get by like all of us. That's sort of how I look at it. Can't treat across state. No, line. I don't treat them. I don't treat them. They are not exactly. my patients. It's I just I, I, I host a talk show. And I, it takes about twelve hours to, ho- to to record it, and you see ninety minutes of it. But we do care <laughs> yeah. about them. We like. Oh, I them. care about them. I I have a relationship with. Them. I, I told. I will. I will give you one tidbit about Farah's interview. You ready? Here it goes. I, Here it comes. I told her I will miss. I will miss her. I, I really. And and I thought. And as as I said it to her, I I meant it. I don't know if it's going to go on TV, but but I thought you know we've all been together ten years. And I have a relationship of of some sort with each of these people I like and her. their family, and uh, and I don't wish them ill. I wish them well. Uh, uh, and if they, you know, they make certain choices, and you know, they drive me, they frustrate me, and drive me crazy sometimes. And I'm worried. Very, I get very, very worried for them at some times. But you know, these are these are humans trying to struggle and make do. And I, I just that's to me. I'm. I'm I take a much more humble perspective on all this. I, I don't. I don't. And it never does anything. Let me tell you, from the standpoint of just mental health treatment, uh, you know, mental helping and mental health generally, it's never helpful to be confrontated with people. That just throws up all their force fields, and either means they're not going to communicate with you, and they certainly are not going to listen to you. What what goes on as you know, therapy on TV is the exact opposite of therapy in the real life. You would never confront people in real life ever like that it doesn't work if it worked we would do it all the time and we trained to do it it doesn't 
work. People that people are defended and people that are struggling, if you start coming at them as a frontal assault, that's the end of your relationship with them, and they certainly will not listen to you or do, even though they may placate you in the moment and say, yeah, okay, I'm going to change. Not in a million years in real life. Not in a million years. So, so people's you know, sort of sense of how things should go in these interviews is anathema to the truth, unfortunately. So. Okay. That's what you said a moment ago kind of struck a chord with me when you yeah. said you wish, you wish them well and you realize they're just people struggling yeah. to be content and enjoy their lives yeah. and, and be successful. And yeah. that was something that occurred to me maybe a year or two ago, and it really diffused a lot of anger. When I would be, I would just, because I get angry for no, I'm like, look at that stupid hat. Mm-hmm. Fuck that guy. Mm-hmm. But the truth of the matter is, I'm like, he's just trying to live his life. And I wish I had the confidence to wear that hat or yeah. or I, anything I, that anyone's I, doing. I, I'm like, screw this guy. I, he just wants attention. He just wants this. But then you realize we're all just trying to figure right. out that's, what that's, makes us. Confident. That's how I approach it. I, yeah. what, I, what I experience more than anything, if there's an emotion, I feel it's frustration. Frustration that people do make the choices they make or do do the things they do. I'm like, oh, like, come on. But I, I know, you know, I, I'm humbled in my relationship with that. Uh, again, the exception being when it comes to a life-threatening issue like what Ryan's got, because then, then yeah. the times, a, times a, a, an essence here, and there's some things that are really very. These are really serious matters that if if something is not done, somebody will die. That's different. That is a different thing. Do you think he's on the edge right now, Ryan um, himself? I, I don't know because they wouldn't really tell me about the treatment that he was getting. I, I know he went to treatment and he says he's following a doctor's it's orders. It's kind of now. a ballsy question to ask after he said he couldn't really talk about the second season. Well, no, no, no. This part I could. Do you think he's on the edge? <laughs> no, no, no. Yes or no question. That's why she's I, a star. I, I know, all, all I know is that the conversation <laughs> upset me. And I, it's enough that I ask Macy to please let me help if there if there's an opportunity. But I'm not sure Macy's that involved right now. You know how I know I'm too old for the yeah, show. Yeah, Macy, it would be difficult for her <laughs> yeah. to kind of get your help. I feel like that would be a Jen and Larry and Ryan and well, Mackenzie. No, but for, for instance, I mean, for instance, let me just say, if they were just to go, what, what should we do with this? I would say, well, here are three good treatment programs. Send them there and keep them there for six months. <laughs> That's what I would do. Okay. Uh, and if you're doing anything else, it's it's you know you're it's very concerning. Now there are there are shorter steps to take. I mean, you can get on Suboxone and replacement therapies or other things, and find some local things. But you know, I, I my my desire in staying to, connected to them was was to urge the best possible care that would have the best possible outcome. That that was sort of what I was thinking. That it, they uh-huh. need to take it very seriously, and I hope they would really think about very comprehensive care. But you know, when you get a heroin addict in treatment, they don't get better the first time. They don't. You have to treat them multiple times for them to get better over long periods of time. And there's always slips and there's always problems. It's just the way her- the opiate addiction works. And so any kind of opiate like that, and that's... I had know, never heard that before. Oh, it's not never once one... Tr- have you ever met anybody with opiate addiction that got better after one no, treatment? No, in fact, I was thinking about Bob's 22 visits. Yeah, Bob had 24 yeah. or 22 uh, 20, visits. Yeah. And it, you know that's one of the sort of misconceptions people have about addiction, that somehow they're going to... Be well after a single treatment. It just doesn't work like that. And so he's, mm-hmm. and by the same token, he's in that struggling phase where he's trying to figure it out. And uh, and I just hope he stays safe during that. That's all. So, you but go. can you unleash with me about the fact that these people can't Again. seem to figure? <laughs> <You're right. laughs> so I feel, I feel like it's just so frustrating that they can't seem to figure life out before bringing kids into drama. Like Kate was still suffering mm. from PPD before she got pregnant again. Ryan is in the midst of his heroin addiction and he's having kids. Um, Janelle just just keeps popping them out, even though she's not stable yet either. It's just, what is it about kids that they're just so obsessed with despite their own instability? Well, one, I wish they could be more like me and have their shit together. One, one, <laughs> of, the, one, one of the theories is, from, a, from an evolutionary biology perspective, one of the theories is, is that when people have severe mental illness, they, they biology pushes them to reproduce quickly because their life, expe- life expectancy is short. Oh. Really? That's one of the, that's oh. One that of the, makes sense. Th- that's, that's one really of the evolutionary does. theories about why this happens. So we need to now, have another show with Grace because okay. this is a whole okay. episode. Right, and right. today it's, it, it's right. Mary Lynn's turn. All right. got to get Mary Lynn here. <laughs> but uh, Grace, I, I enjoy talking to you and thank you for being We're going to have you back after Bye-bye. the second Bye-bye. episode. Uh, yeah. And, uh, Great. Thank you. Yeah. Then we'll talk about the fair interview and stuff and, and uh, I, I, you know, it, it, you, it, it's mental health issues are, are complex, right? And they are not a straight line to recovery. And people tend to make the same mistakes over and over again, even when they're in treatment. 
So it's just mm-hmm. it's just the nature of these problems. And you just got to remember, you started with somebody with a a marker for a significant mental health problem, which is teen pregnancy, and then you followed it. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. and it's real. All right, my dear. Thank you so much. Yeah. I, appreciate, I appreciate the opportunity to talk with you. Where can we Thank find you, you so Grace? Much. It's been great. Where can we find yeah, you? Yeah, you can find me on YouTube, uh, Grace Report. I'm also on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram under Grace Report as well. Okay, great. There you go. See you later. All right, we'll take a break. Be right back. I think you're all aware that we just had a terrible flu season. It may not be quite over yet. There may be another spike coming. Hopefully, you used hydration, hydrolyte to stay ahead with your hydration. It is the best oral hydration product out there. I, I intended to invent it. They came along. I got behind them. Even if you avoid the flu, stay hydrated. It sounds simple, but it's not just about drinking water. It's about getting the fluids, getting the right kind of fluids, particularly if you're working out regularly, running, that sort of thing. Beauty of Hydrolyte is whether you're sick or not, you can absolutely benefit from the proper balance of sodium, glucose, and water. And, of course, Hydrolyte does this better than any sports drink. And water alone, that's a different issue. Hydrolyte comes in great flavors like orange, berry, and lemonade, available in a pre-mixed drink, a powder, or what I like, the effervescent tablet that you can simply drop in a glass or a bottle of water. Compared to sports drinks, Hydrolyte delivers you up to four times the electrolytes with 75% less sugar. That's right. Hydrolyte solutions are appropriate for all ages, and each bottle or package includes easy-to-follow dosing instructions. You can find Hydrolyte at Rite Aid or at Hydrolyte.com slash D-R-D-R-E-W. That's Dr. Drew. For a limited time, any listeners can save 30% on Hydrolyte. Just click the banner on my website, drdrew.com. Use the code drdrew18. That is D-R-D-R-E-W-18 at checkout. Hydrolyte.com slash drdrew, and use the code drdrew18. All right, we're back. Of course, the other voice you were hearing uh, was Marilyn Ricecup. I dare you to, to spell her name. Hi. <laughs> really, I, I cannot ever I, spell your name. I like that. I dare you to spell <laughs> I my dare last name. That's a problem. good spin on how terrible it is. <laughs> it, it, I dare you to spell wait, it. Where, it's dangerous. <laughs> Go ahead and try. I don't hear Mike. Uh, I Nate, I don't hear Mike. You hear what? Right. You hear what? Uh, probably 15 years ago, Sarah Silverman introduced her as Marilyn Ricecup, and I went, got it. <laughs> like, like the actually. You know. I I just assumed I'm so right. I'm so dumb that that's how it's actually pronounced, regardless of the spelling. Yes, yes. That's so, just her way. She yeah. put her spin on it. <laughs> is it now. Hungarian or something? What is it's, it? It's uh, Czechoslovakian. Czech. Oh, how weird. She's Czech too. Yeah. What? What? Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Weird bonding over something that doesn't matter. How dare you? <laughs> Let's talk about your Star Trek living room again. <laughs> oh, we will. Don't you worry. We'll get into that. Speaking how do you guys know each other? From we don't. The improv comedy. Yeah. What? No, we, we don't. Do. I know. Yeah. But we really don't. We don't we really see know each, each other. other for years. Yeah, we say hi, and I uncomfortably hugged her the other night. That's weird of you. Yeah, for me. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't that weird for me. But what else oh, did good. you talk oh, good. about? Good. You said something. Good. You revealed because something, it felt like I, that I was an even... inappropriate hug. But you said something weird, evidently. Who said something weird? Oh, no. You you told me that I looked like I was having a breakdown or something. No. Why and would I, I said, say that? I said, that's just my natural face. Or you th- were worried that I was upset oh, or something like probably that. Probably a pathetic attempt to try to bond or something. I don't that's know. So I think I just was trying to think of my set. And I, also, that's my yeah. natural face. Yeah. That Which I is, just... I think, is is, ad, is, a, is a, a positive. <laughs> I, I do. Resting I, upset I, face so she can be on 24 no. behind that computer. <laughs> right. like resting upset all the time. I've made a career out of it. It is a Timely career. reference, too. Um the uh, you came up at a therapist appointment a few weeks ago, and my therapist was almost yelling at me about. Are you pointing at me or Mary Lynn? No, my therapist was going. You, you Who bitch, came up. Which one of us came up? Mary Lynn okay. did. You've come up before too. Yeah. I'm like, I don't think he's a real doctor. <laughs> um, Mary Lynn, you come up in his dreams. Uh, my nightmare. therapist said you, 100 percent of the time. Tell people they're full of shit and they don't know what they're talking about. And I go, I've never done that. She goes, you apps. Anytime somebody gives you a compliment, you immediately tear it apart. And I go, you know what's funny is before I came to this appointment, it was eight thirty on a Wednesday night. I go, I saw a comic in the parking lot, and you said, oh, your hair looks cool tonight. And I went, oh, it looks terrible. And I left. <laughs> and I go, I did that. I did that exact thing. <laughs> somebody said something nice to me, and I immediately went, oh, you're wrong. <laughs> Yeah, isn't that weird? Isn't that weird? That's you, you to, man. You need to take it. I'm sorry for mentioning your take uh, a compliment. Resting serious <laughs> face. Yeah, yeah, resting upset. Look face. at me now. <laughs> but you know what? I think that's <laughs> Look part how happy of, I am. I now. think that's part of your personality. I'm going to rebuild it into this. <laughs> but it's not too late. Right? You're going to rebuild it. <laughs> I'm going to rebuild my resting face <laughs> into a smile. 
So what else going on? Where, where can you see you? Where should we look for you? Uh, I'm at the Comedy Store every week at MarylandRiceCup.com on all platforms. I got to start a podcast, guys. Go on, I heard that's the thing when you – because I want to go on the road – Oh yeah, to sell do some tickets. Comedy yeah. to sell some tickets to make that connection because I got a lot of TV credits, but that doesn't necessarily unless you're in front of their faces. Doing comedy, I'm exhausted already. So, so I got I, I got I, a big I, movie so coming I, out. I did oh, a big movie called Night School with Kevin Ooh. Hart and Tiffany Haddish. Oh, that's Big cool. broad comedy. It was super fun. I got to spend the day with Mary Lynn. She was in Bob Saget's film Benjamin. It was going okay. out in the fall, so we hung out with Kevin Pollack and. That was super fun. It was really fun. Because yeah. that, that was like a gift. You guys showed up at the end of a very long night. We're like, hey, these guys are here. <laughs> we were uh, like, hey, it's a party. Yeah, it was we were, so fun. You're like hanging out with you guys. you like, you're sick with a hoodie on. <laughs> you were like in that little side room. Well, <laughs> yeah. There were some things going on. Uh, we had been in that house good. for quite a while. And, and it was a little... night shoot. It was yeah, at night. That's right. On top of a roof. But you had there... the premiere party at, at a shooting location? Huh? No, no. I, no, I, I about... was in the film. Oh, he's in the film. Oh, yeah, yeah. Got it. Got it. Playing uh, the secret. I, they can't what? talk about it. Don't talk about it. Oh. It's, a, it's a surprise. Why? It's out. Yeah, it's out. It's not out yet. So it out premiered, out. but it didn't okay. come out. Yeah, come so out. Bob asked me to keep that. Oh, oh, that, that, okay. that's the so reveal. We'll, we'll, Gosh, the reveal. you caught me right before I, I blew it. About that. Nice job. So it's a good time. Um, <laughs> I'm surprised you don't have a podcast because it's a really nice outlet. Well, I, it's a I really saw, good I saw Mary Lynn with Christina P, and mm-hmm. they were great together. I was thinking this should be like the super smart. I love Christina shit. P. It should be the super smart women comedy tour. <laughs> mm-hmm. We had be. an idea years ago, Christina and I. This was before timely 24 reference before it came 24 came back which was five or six years ago now so even before that she and i we were analyzing dr laura (laughs) and just it was like a house on fire but it was so um meta the way we were you know like picking a bit of a call and just like I love that i could talk about this for an hour just like what's going on what i love that i love that you got to go on your mom's house at least. And yes, I, that, it's so. been a while since yeah, I've been on there. So. They, but I would know, love to hear you guys do that. Take, I would too. Even if it wasn't, I don't think Doctor Laura is even on right now. But something That's like why, that. It's such a like. No, but it would be, it's that would be fantastic. Listen, Doctor Phil somebody. or something. Just, just yeah. take something apart. It'd be very interesting to hear you guys. Yeah, yeah, that was fun. We did, we even did a live show of it. Um, you know what? There's sort of a movement in that direction. I don't know if you saw, have you seen the uh, Natasha Leggero honeymoon special on no. Netflix? No. Oh. She and her husband pick yeah. people apart a bit. Oh, uh, they bring people from the audience. Yeah. I think I saw a clip yeah. on social it media. It was very good. The problem is yeah. I, 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 I I'm not a fan of critics, and it seems like you're venturing into critic area where you're going to go, look what this guy's doing. Now let me tell you how, what a loser he is. And then you go, oh, somebody could watch my show where I'm criticizing this. But then again, Dr. Laura deserves it. So no. It's a fine line, though. You've been yeah. around comedy long enough. So, I mean, people kind of love sometimes. Yeah. It, sometimes that's super fun when you're on stage and you just are, oh, you guys are on a date. This is happening. He thinks that. Because yeah. sometimes you yeah. get into that zone where you're picking up on people's stuff. And yeah. they also kind of love it when you... Yes. But I've seen people's YouTube videos where they're criticizing other people's YouTube videos. And you're kind of like... <laughs> uh, That's what she, the world is turning into. Everyone's The, the video pie, game where pie. someone's watching you <laughs> right, talk about pie. the video exactly, game. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Oh, my goodness. Can... Um, uh, we should have talked about this well, just I, beforehand. But, I want... Uh, I want uh, oh, is this an email I was supposed to read? <laughs> Get to it. Susan, was I supposed to read this email? Yeah, but I think you kind of answered. Well, it was about, it, I just thought it was interesting. A woman emailed you about how you should put Ryan in 12 step and stuff like that. And they just don't show that on Teen Mom. So I, I printed out that email. She's a nurse. She seemed really nice. And it was nice of her to. She says, rather than support. Uh, seems like this show is all over the map. He said, you dated, <laughs> you, you, you questioned his compliance with outdated therapies such as 12 step and a. And interrogated his abilities to remain absent from other substances. Um, look, there is about to be a Cochrane analysis that shows 12 step is more effective than any other treatment out there or as effective as any other treatment. So the idea that it's not evidence based or is outdated is insanity. Okay, let's so move on. I will always be <laughs> emphasizing that kind of thing. It's free. And it's available. It's not the only thing, but it's free. I and think Grace was really great, and you guys talked about it enough. All right, we can, fair we enough. can read fair that enough. another Let's go back. time. I want to talk about Mike's life right now with Mary Lynn and, and Mike. So, do you know what he's up to right now? Purging? Fixing. Yes. Fixing my problems. Yes. Slowly so fixing. I heard earlier you changed one addiction to another addiction, and now you're going, you're getting rid of stuff. But the, it's not you're just an, that. It's. 
it, and and I don't want to make this all about me, but essentially, Please, and I've been at the improv for, cool 30, <laughs> for 30 years. Thank you. Look I'm, at that. I'm cured, right? <clears throat> Done. I've been there for so long, and it just felt like I was spinning my wheels, and I had all this frustration and all this anger, and it wasn't necessarily like I literally took fuck the man. Like to a I, new level. I'm like fuck, <laughs> fuck any of anyone of authority, but I didn't take it as a ha ha ha. That, that is, that I is, took it as really that's my enemy. Screw them. That's and I such made a, it. It's such a waste of energy. I made it very difficult what, to work why, with why the, is it, why the that upper energy? management for the last ten years. What a waste! What'd that do for you? You're not helping. I'm just saying. It's I, just it's such a waste of energy. I, I, I'll, I'm going to sum this entire thing up right now. So I pitched an idea for a film mm-hmm. to a friend. He gave me the money for it. I quit. I didn't realize there was going to be a mourning period, right? All of my identity was locked up in that company for 30 years. Yeah. Um, and all, and it was a very difficult transition. And then it got worse and worse. And then I was just spinning my wheels. And he flew out here and went, you seem to be frantic. And you're just not doing what you're supposed to be doing. And he decided, you need to get clean up your life and clean, get fix your, you know, because I just disregard everything. I owe the IRS $23,000. And I'm like, whatever. And it's just squandering money left and right on bullshit items and just living, thinking, oh, I'm going to be dead anyway, so what does it matter? But right now, he has me documenting all of these things, and one of them is getting rid of all that bullshit. And I've got hundreds and hundreds of toys and all this stuff that I collected. It's way more than just that as a distraction. It's everything I've done as a distraction. Every time I buy a new car, you know, my car is a 2015. It's got 169,000 miles on it. I put three or 400,000 miles on a car in four or five years constantly because I just drive for anxiety. I go out to the middle of nowhere and I go out there with the idea of I'm going to take photos or I'm going to make a video or I'm going to record a podcast. But realistically, I'm just avoiding things. And at this point right now, and I don't, I know it's going to be more of a long transition, I want to fix this. I want to be responsible. I want to have a sense of pride. What is, and I what wanna, is this? This issue where I just feel like garbage. I just feel like a worthless fraud and it just feels like except bullshit. for that though, except, except, <laughs> except for that. Is there anything else? No, but I. But part of it is like <laughs> this IRS like worth, issue, and then fraud. you know, I went from being overpaid for a pretty easy job, yeah, and not really having a boss for decades. Maybe that's why you had to create the boss, create the man. Yeah, and then now I I'm being held accountable for something, and I've made two other films, and I did those on my own at my own. And I always had an excuse, like, I didn't really try, and now I want to be completely honest and transparent, and I want to be true to myself, whatever that person is, and it scares the fuck out of me, frankly, but I'm just, I just want to be comfortable in my own skin, and I'm super not, and, so and this is all... are you saying that the, the fuck the man thing was part of the whole defense mechanism yeah, that you... Yeah, 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 like, don't... I took it literally, like, I've, anytime I see somebody in authority, I'm like, the enemy... And I felt it in my heart. So and that's pu- like oppositional defiance disorder. Whoa. The only time that I've ever made made this work in a showbiz thing was like Star Trek. Like when I sat down with Paramount <laughs> executives and I pitched the idea of me directing this this show. And I, I knew what to say. And it was just lies. Like they're like, you should do this. Yeah, great idea. You should do this. Yeah, great idea. And then I left and did my own thing. Oh, hold on a second. Do you, do you mean that people don't lie in pitches routinely? <laughs> no, I know they do, but I didn't, I didn't, I didn't play along. Like I didn't t- look at some guy and go, that is a great idea, even though I had no plans to yeah. follow through. Yeah. But the, the, I'm sorry for rambling. That's, that's, that's my story right now where I'm at and I'm – well, that, uh, yeah, but that's, I mean, I, first of all, I can relate to stuff you're saying, but the pitch thing is almost like, how do you get along in a business sense? Like, yeah. I don't yeah. need, I, I'd like to be able to get through the pitch and yeah. believe that I can do it without tearing yeah. it apart before it happens. Um, well, our our mutual friend, Paul, who's paying for the movie that Dr. Drew met last week, act, told me, if you can get rid of this financial stress and this clutter in your life, which isn't just all the junk that I own. It's other stuff, too. Like what? It, just uh, like just overthinking everything and not having a sense of pride. And you know, you, Didn't we drill down into the mom stuff, you and I, on the phone one day? Yeah. And, isn't, yeah. and didn't you promise you were going to deal with that? And isn't that really what we're at the, on the, I, the verge of here? Yeah. How so? A, what is Tell yeah, him. it's a not it, a sense of pride. If I'm going to be honest about all this, if I'm, well, I'm. I got a therapist. I know, and you so told me you were going to go talk about the mom stuff and not stop avoiding it. I've talked about it, and I don't know what 
what re resolution comes from that? Well, you have to talk and talk and talk and talk and talk. And yeah. Sort of revisit and reframe it, and you start to look at it from different she perspectives. Has, she has I, – I do look at things in a different perspective. Yeah. Now, I do understand why I just want to get away and hide from people, and I understand – Partially why I'm so angry about these things. I and love I, to get away and hide from yeah, people. Yeah, you it took come, me. You it go took to Death me Valley years. Me. It took me the first uh, when I when we first met each other. I would go into auditions. I would get parts. Uh, this is a little bit of sidetrack, but it all relates. I was so nervous that one of my first parts was the part of a nervous secretary for the Meredith Baxter Burning wow. Vehicle way back in the 90s. And I was so good. I was like, I'm going to use it. And they said, you're great. We're going to send you to producers. I didn't know what that meant. I walked upstairs and she was sitting across from me. And I was like doing the nervous thing, but it was real. And I looked at her and I could see her feeling bad for me. And then I, just, and then I was like, the mom from Family Ties. And I blacked out and I left the room and I did not get the part. Uh, that was a sidetrack. But the main thrust of I would go into these casting rooms and I was good enough at getting through it. But inside of me, I felt like, oh, fuck them. They don't get it. You know, like that whole crew we hung out with, it, insanely talented, lovely group of people. But also, I think looking back on it, all had kind of a chip on our shoulders of like, the man doesn't get what we're trying to do. And then yeah. that was a bit. Well, uh, the first time fueled, I became. All, uh, seems like, movement. That seems defensive. Seems so. Well, defensive. I didn't realize until a good twelve years in. Oh, everybody! The casting director, more than anyone, is on your side. The producers, they want you to do well. Like yeah, people yeah, actually. Yeah. And I had this whole like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> like I just like a stained T-shirt, and I'm looking back. I was like, I was kind of a hot bitch. Like, why did I think still are. the yeah. world is against me? At yeah. all times, because I, I it's must tell easier you, it, to like hide behind. I that, gotta right? say, one of the things Help that I, 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 I go ahead, finish. That. Well, one of the things I've always liked about you, and the first time I became aware of you was on Mister Show, um, because I worked on that show, and I remember just going, she, like you were. I thought you were so intriguing because you were you were odd, but in a very like in a very na natural to you way, and I like that you still are it's, yourself on stage, and you still smart. will do stuff that's odd. And or smart. that's in your head and smart. I'm telling you, stuff smart she does. Yeah, no, but I'm saying I I, st I like that a lot. I love comics that stick to th being themselves. Yes, whether even sometimes you know at the risk of you know sometimes I've seen you over the last 25 years mm -hmm. sometimes not do great. Oh, and yeah. it was because and I'm like she's still sticking to Mary Lynn. I'm like that is Mary Lynn, <laughs> and I love I but I love it. I that's, I don't know if that was a choice or by no, but, <laughs> default. No, you know, but you know what I'm saying. Some people would be like, I got to go home and write some regular old jokes. Yeah, and and I like that you didn't do that. I didn't know how to do that. I wanted to do that. I was tortured over. I mean, for years, I'd be like, why don't you have a sketch packet? Me voice to myself. I don't have the capability to do that. I was performing out of some sort of need. Uh, to express myself and but you know for what's approval great? as like our reaching out. When, when people see you and know you, you are you. There was no she's like this, yeah, she's yeah. like that person, yeah. and it's pretty cool. Let me, let me ask something. I, I want to go back to this oppositional defiance stuff that you guys both had, this yeah. anti -authority, whatever whatever it was, anti-authoritarianism or, or fear yeah. of authority or who knows what this actually was. I have zero of that, and I, it mystifies me. You're laughing at that? My wife laughed at that for some reason. It's true. Well, that's I, why I, you're soothing. Like, but, I, mean, but I, why, I know you are like, who you are and you have this long career, but just your vibe, uh, you know, we're like the, but, hey, but, we're, we might, oh, you're listen, the authority. But, we yeah, might like I, punch I, a hole in the wall. <laughs> you don't know what we might yes. just hang some things from the ceiling and you're just, you, yeah. Uh, yeah, but some people cast me as the authority yes. and then I get, yeah. the, then I get the bullshit and, and it's mystifying to me always. I'm like, why? That's such a waste. I, yeah, it, but if we take away let, your, the, how easy it is for you to go in that position of authority, take that away. You, your presence, there but, is something about you that's not like, oh, God, I'm, yeah. I'm a fraud. I'm this. Yeah. You, but, you but, just have that. But forget it about me. I, I don't understand people that take issue with authority. I just don't understand it. Because whoever the authority is, is just somebody also just trying to get by. Well, no, trying. if you want me to be totally honest, it's, it might be narcissism. It might, it might be arrogance that I think, fuck you. I'm doing something creative, and you don't get it because you're not creative. So... Get the fuck out of my life. I agree. It life. flips from um, I, I have I'm something special, yes. and then yes. the other end of that is I'm a piece of shit. Yes. It goes from that yes. to that. Okay, Absolutely. well, I'm a, I'm a piece of shit. Therefore, having an authority around 
reminds me of what origi- right. originally yeah. made me feel like a piece of shit. It's like the a, I'm a piece of shit. Look at me. Well, but it's yeah, the piece piece of shit around which the whole I'm world, a piece of shit. I yes. should have more listeners yes. on my podcast. Pe- piece of shit around which the whole world revolves. I don't try. <laughs> I need more than eight thousand downloads a week. You know, you know what I mean. It's like this. Yes. I don't. I make it real clear. I'm not really trying because this isn't the best I can do because I'm special, <laughs> but. I should have a bigger audience. That's right. It, it, so it leaves you in that area of not doing the best you can do, but knowing that you're better than. Yeah. I don't know. It's like but that it's sounds like, like dad slippery. Stuff. It sounds like dad somehow made you feel not worthwhile or something. Well, no? we don't need to talk about my. Uh, Let's talk about it though. No, but we don't need to talk. <laughs> I, I understand my I mom problems. I oh, understand. But we're not talking that. about your mom now. Now we're talking about your dad. Yeah, tell us about your dad. <laughs> like we know, my mom was not a good mom. Is not a good mom. Forever. Never was. Let me get this straight. She's not a good mom? Yeah. Okay. Wait, forever, what are you saying? Forever, exactly. never. We, forever, I mean, never, I, feel, never. I feel like once I start, it's going to be a half an hour. And, I'm, <laughs> and then another <laughs> thing. Forever, never, never. I mean, just take the cult. He's holding back. <laughs> just the fact that she took her four little kids and moved us into a cult where we lived in yeah. one room for two years yeah. is bad mom and never saw her. Yeah. Like, And then imagine that happening another thousand times with other circumstances and stuff. And but I understand why I have these issues on that side of it. But I, and I also understand why I want to run away. Or like I like even like I have an insane week this week. And my thought tomorrow is I'm driving out to Death Valley and I'm just going to hang out in the middle of the desert. Well, your first move in terms of getting better is not doing that anymore. That's an easy move. Like I'm not going to drive to the desert. It's easier said than done, though. You, I'm not. You know, gonna. a few minutes ago when I said I love to hide, he goes, "You should come to Death Valley with me." <laughs> <laughs> Cut to us tomorrow. Hey, uh, no, I don't even remember I, what I had to do anymore. I promise you. Cut to you guys at the Opera House at Death Valley. This is totally <laughs> <laughs> no. I there is some cool stuff in Death. Valley. I see. <laughs> What's it's called? The Opera House, right? I've dragged Dude, Mike. I've, the Opera House. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. There's that beef jerky place. I've just no, that, that was uh, that was the that was Las Vegas. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I've I have, and now I'm Mister. I'm totally preoccupied with that too. Like, how do they make a? How do they, do people really go good. in there and buy beef jerky? Yeah, it's like, really what the good. F- it's really bizarre. Death Valley is fantastic, and there are so many hidden gems that you would not believe exist out okay, there. Okay, you're not going to see them tomorrow. This is your first. Let's move. get your to do list. And, and here's the deal. Yeah, I feel I can feel the resistance exuding from your body. You must you must <laughs> um, on your own behalf make a determination to go a different direction. Change it. This is this is the moment of change. This you gotta go the other way. I don't like having a moment of change. I like it to be a big wide sweeping <laughs> turn. Let, that's it, less let it go for several days then, but not does not include driving to Death Valley. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see about that. Even Nate goes, see you tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, see you the, cut, through, cut through Instagram pictures um, of the dead family. <laughs> How are you right now? How's your head right now? Um, Jeez. It's fine. Get like, off curious, my back. I'm curious. You're, You're the, so man. the man. Like at this point in your life, like where is it's your ba- head? It's much better and worse in some ways. <laughs> like, what's the worst? Um, because I feel like I'm getting down to the core of some things. And I, and I relate to some of what you're saying where um, – when I wake up in the morning, I have the luxury of I, – I still do need money, but I've got a pretty low yeah. overhead, and, I'm, and my family's great, and yeah. my husband kind of lets me do what I want to do, and which sometimes drives me crazy because I want more attention. But then most of the time, it's like, cool. I have a guy that doesn't mind me going out and doing stand-up, but I can wake up and go – going to say go, going to Death Valley with us. Going stranger. to Death Valley. <laughs> um, but I can wake up and, and – um, see the mechanism starting already of all the things that I want to do that I'm not doing, of the perpetual, you haven't done this, you have things that you want to do, I'm scared, I don't know how to do it, I don't feel like I've gotten what I deserve or what I want, um, and I'm worried because I'm getting older, and it, there's always like a snowball effect yeah. of things, and then there's an, you know there's another part of me that's like, hey, it's okay, and that part of me is is getting bigger of like knowing, seeing the part that's attacking. So your perception of the whole business has changed then where it's not it, your total, I- your identity and you need to make a mark to prove yourself. I mean, I still want to do a lot of stuff, um, but it is better in terms of, I'm not just like dating musicians and comedians because I need validation. I'm not going on stage out of this incredible neuroses. Now I can sit back and it still gives me a lot of anxiety and it's a challenge, but it's more of like, oh, 
I do this because I want to do it. I'm yeah. not doing it because I need to prove something Which is, or that I need people to like me. Do you appreciate how great that is? I'm starting to. I'm starting to. Like because yesterday morning was like, and I today it's almost like if you had a really great meditation experience, which I, once in my life, I went to this guru with this f- friend of mine. That's a whole other story, but I had one of those profound experiences, but yesterday Did I woke wait, up. Wait, you just pointed at him when you yeah. said with this friend of mine. Uh, was this guy, it, no, was no, 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 no. I don't know. Was, I was, was that the mad, ayahuasca was, I gave you or was that? Yes. The, the, remember when we did that <laughs> and we pissed and shit I thought you just did like the. And barfed and then we were like, isn't life beautiful? Uh, but pissed, yesterday morning I had, shit and barfed. you know, we let it all go. We sneezed. <laughs> We cried. We pulled our hair out. We grew hair in other places. (laughs) We wiped out in between our toes. Um, But yesterday I had a snowball of positive behavior, which as soon as you use language to describe it, it becomes that. But the experience of it was uh, um, lasting in a way that I had never experienced. And it wasn't loud. And it was just sort of a a neutral happiness that lasted for... Yes. And I think I... It was related to the performance I had done the night before. Uh, maybe I I didn't have the best dreams, but sometimes I, I will wake up and I'll know I had a stress dream because mm-hmm. I just c- carry that through. So whatever the magical combo was, there was, I would say, about three or four hours, which I've never in my life experienced a sort of gentle buoyancy upward with everything. And I was like, you better remember this. <laughs> like, write it down. So, of course, today I'm like, you didn't remember it or write it down. Like, how are you ever going to get back there? And then another voice was like, hey, you might not. It's totally cool. And then I'm just back to the uh, fight zone in my head. So um, she- but I had it, and I recognized it, and that means it'll it'll happen again. But, like, there's – when I talk to people about their careers and their like people that are su- comics that are super hungry and stuff and they're young, yeah, I always I I, th- I didn't know this all the time. I just realized it maybe ten years ago. If you do something you like doing, you might not be successful. You might be successful, but at least you're not going to end up sixty years old going. I just spent twenty five years being a comic and I don't like it, or a musician and I don't like it, or doing this and I don't like it, and then you're going to just be filled with animosity well, there is a part of that um that this is total on the side of that but where it, some, i don't like going out of the house yeah i understand that but i love doing comedy so yeah. there there's also a nightly uh Gets you collapse out. of like i really this is the last thing i want to do it takes a lot of unpleasantness to then get there and sometimes it's not even until after the performance that I'm like, I feel really good. This is awesome. This is totally what I'm yeah. meant to be doing. This is what I want to be doing. But you'll love this. The other night I had one nighter in Indiana and this comic came up to me. He recognized me as an actor. And uh, one nighter, little comedy festival, not a lot of money, strange locale. Uh, he comes up, he goes, you've got juice. I don't know if you're funny or not. but And he's talking to me and I'm like, eh, cool, thanks. And he's like, so what is it? Comedy or acting? And I'm like, um, both? No, you can't have both. Like, it was one of these, like, you got to go on the road. I'm like, I- I've been on the road, but I also like visibility and selling tickets. And I'm, no, man, you got to go because you're funny and it's in your heart. And I was just like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like, boy, like, he's like testing me because he recognized. And it's like, would I be here for a one nighter at some rinky dink small yeah. thing if i didn't love yeah. what i was doing Plus like you why get do that you kind think of I'm advice here? at burning man um, if you want by to the way, I, to, to that, I, I want to see you act more i want to see more of your acting i just personally want to see more thank of it. you because because she's good yeah. and it's and, and you do lots of different stuff i'm not kidding thanks i, I just have this feeling no, if, okay there's no denying you're super talented let's go, let's go no but guys. the but the acting part i i don't know that, the acting part like i think her at her best is like when you're a panel on a talk show. And I can't even remember where I saw you, your first Letterman maybe. Like it was just the perfect panel. Huh. Like it was re- – I just remember in my head it was just perfect. It was like you, your personality. Did you get the couch? And it was super <laughs> funny, like genuinely funny. And it was just a great segment. I remember – and that was like 20 – I don't dude. know how long ago that was. But yeah. I, that was a long time ago. And uh, and uh, it was fantastic. It was a perfect like guest panel. Good. Am I we making this up? Was it Letterman? Yeah, I'm sure. I know I've done them all. I've done um, them all. Yeah, short it's hair. Been a while. Yeah. At the time. Thank you. 
You were acting. I just, I just like it, it. You know what? I don't think I'd be back in the comedy as much if I had gotten more acting work. I'm just. Uh, no, I'm sure it's. Imp- I, I can imagine the reality was just terrible. I mean, you know, in terms of ugh, going out there and all the, yeah. this, all the no, no, no's that must come. I but, just picture. But how I, I, I just know as a viewer, as somebody that consumes your stuff, it's it's very it it need more of it. That's all. Thanks. That's all I just pictured because I've had this like fantasy for the last couple of years that my therapist fucking destroyed. But I just want to buy a motorhome and live in it, and I feel like that's going to be where I end up in a motorhome. How did she destroy it? She just pointed out to me why I want this escape mechanism. Why I want to always be moving. You're going to be living in your escape mechanism. Yeah, and you're going to be your escape. So instead, you're just cleaning your house. I genuinely thought of it. I was like, I got a great idea for you. Hire a dude in an armored truck to drive you to gigs, and then there's no windows, and you can just sit in a comfortable chair. And when you're about to go on, they just open the door and you walk in, you go on, then you get back in your oh. comfortable armored truck with no windows oh, and somebody so drives. Great. But wouldn't that be that, that sounds like something Corolla would do. But that gives I, the, don't, I don't see Maryland doing that. That leaves no. the whole going outside because yeah. I know I if I were a comic, I don't want to get in my car, park, go into a comedy club, have to talk to people, and then and then But you know what I like it once I do and I need yeah, it of course. once I do. Hey, even last night I went to a party and I dread parties. I dread them. And it was the most Wonderful. I've learned this a million times. You know that, right? Like yeah, when I you mean, call me up and say, let's go to dinner, I'm like, oh, fuck, <laughs> fuck, fuck, thank, fuck. Thank you for that, Mike. I have to go. No, but it's not personal. I it's not. I dread everything. And I committed to this party last night. And once I got there, I was like, oh, I love these people and I'm comfortable around them. And they're all mutual friends, you, yes. you know. And uh, I was like, this, this was a great experience. I had an hour long conversation with Evan Sledder. And, and, and uh, it was just, I, I'm like, I forgot what it's like to be social and actually have an engaging conversation with somebody I like. Uh, tell them, tell them about what we're seeing on your Instagram and what you're doing. You haven't really talked about the uncluttering yet. Like what, I am, uh, what's really happening? I, I'm the, the beginning of the, the, this is going to be a process, courtesy of Paul, l- allowing me to do this. Besides the regular film about death, <laughs> um, which you making really... a movie called Death is Funny, and uh, Marilyn gets it. She's, she's like, okay. yeah, yeah, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, my sister got killed two years ago, and uh, it was the most harrowing, just the sickest feeling. I, I can't even explain it. And somebody goes, a tree fell in her car. And somebody goes, what are the odds? And I went, why after the worst thing that ever happened to me would you bring up the second worst thing? Math. (laughs) And then I was like, what kind of monster makes a joke (laughs) at the worst time in his life? So that was the pitch that I got the money for the movie. And then it's transitioned into another side project, which is total which transparency. Is getting into the what kind of monster part. Yeah. But total transparency right now. So I'm taking all that stuff in my living room, hundreds and hundreds oh, and of toys. Oh, you're filming you doing it? I'm getting rid of everything. I'm Including selling the it, Star Trek? giving it away. He has the flight deck of the Star Trek everything. Enterprise in his living room. Do you Every- know that? I the, the, picture, okay. I all of this, that. all of this bullshit is going amazing. away. It's gonna be sad to be terrible. <laughs> but I mean, is that I, going away too? I genuinely have a problem trying to fill something with buying shit well, that I don't even want. You're a hoarder, watch. but of fun, shiny new things, yeah. not but like rat. Yeah, shit. but it's embarrassing because okay, first of all, I don't like wearing watches. I bought a five thousand dollar watch at one in the morning for no reason. Aww. That's a five thousand dollar watch. Uh-huh. You want to buy it? Do you want to buy it with you? Let's smash it right now. Want to buy it? <laughs> this isn't the worst. This isn't the worst. I have three swords. I don't like medieval times. I can't I'm not into like... swords. I have three swords. You weren't guilted enough as a kid, clearly. Because <laughs> I couldn't do that. Your brothers and sisters? Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, that in the room. A five thousand dollar watch. What's the, what the fuck? I thought, would, I thought it was gonna make me happy. Yeah, but nothing, none of these, not, no. Not, How long did it make you happy for? N- zero. Oh. None of these things. See, I bought a fancy car, and it, it kept me happy for a good eight months to a year. Shit, I'm doing that today. <laughs> oh, God, no. Drive I'm it doing, to Death Valley. I'm doing that today. I can see where a car can make you happy because it's a, a pleasurable experience. Yes. It, it, it. Yeah, yeah, it gave back yeah. for a while. Yeah. It, it did fade, but. Yeah. Because yeah, you get used to it just like anything else. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The whole thing is just transparency. It's not like I'm trying to prove to any – I'm not going to go, hey, everybody, look at me. Here's a two-hour thing about me cleaning my house and, and selling everything and changing my perspective. It's being true for, for me and, and accepting these things and smothering my mom with a pillow what's until gonna, she's dead. <laughs> what's gonna and then getting all, out of it. What's going to happen with all the cool stuff? Selling, giving, donating. 
I'm okay. going to, I want, I have a very large box full of stuff that's not worth selling, but they're toys and they're. I'll bring my son, we'll and, come over. I was just, that's what I said to you earlier. I'm like, do you want, does he want anything? Because I will give it to you. I'll bring it to the improv or something some night, but I don't know if there's anything he wants. You don't want a, a, like a action figure, like an eagle? Yeah. <laughs> What's that I'm called? not selling those. What Freedom, Freedom the American <laughs> Eagle. <laughs> the one thing that you thought of. Nope. Because it's hanging a bizarre out. thing. Well, it's just like last night. I'm, I'm pulling, I'm just What's dumping shit eagle? on the floor. And I'm like, I have so many statues of Neil Diamond. I'm like, I don't want to <laughs> give these up. I was like, I found two more. And I'm like, God. Where do you find them? I buy what everything. What do you mean you found them? I buy everything. God, you would have been so wealthy now if you just invested that money back when you started buying all this I did invest it. In what? E.T. Okay. jewelry, E.T. luggage. No, had you not been doing this and just putting yeah. it in Berkshire I've got about Hathaway. 15 Star, Star Trek mugs. What's going to happen to the Starship Enterprise? You haven't answered that yet. I don't know yet. That's the, the, there's two things I'm saving until the end. Yeah. My uh, collection of skateboards, even though I'm 51 years old. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen to anything. I'm, I'm afraid. This is, uh, I'm definitely frightened of what's going to happen. What but I'm you, don't have to, you don't have to jettison everything. You could have it installed somewhere else. You know yeah. what I mean? Just so it's not I also part probably of your... don't need 20 guitars. Probably. Probably. Are they signed? Are they autographed or something? No, these are real instruments. Of- do you need any guitars? Do you yeah. play I mean, the guitar? They, yeah. You play the guitar. Why do you have so many guitars? Um, yeah, I am getting nervous okay, about what, all this what, stuff. Why are you asking me that like when we've closed, this, we've closed this show with songs I've written over and over oh, and over true. and over again? <laughs> um, the, oh, we'll uh, so around. ungrateful. <laughs> I know. How about him? We're friends. <laughs> you play guitar? <laughs> he, he, um, we were friends, but he hates to hear from me. Well, he listen. dreads when I call. No, no, I don't. Please <laughs> don't mis- misinterpret that. It's I dread everything. <laughs> I tr- so I'm I. having dinner with a good friend on Wednesday, and I'm like, fuck, fuck. Okay, well, <laughs> you can have some therapy with Dr. Drew while we do the next podcast going okay. out with Susan Pinsky. Okay. But look who just walked in. I know, crazy. Good Does to he see look you. familiar? So, James... Preston Rogers here. He was also on Swole Patrol. He also is going to be on Calling Out. But, you know, I don't know. Maybe you guys want to, like, talk a little bit about who he is. And Oh, about Benjamin? Yeah. Benjamin? I mean, that's sort of the topic here. Where maybe when you grab that headphone, right? That headset right yeah, there. Be pop part that of on, baby doll. So we all spent... Uh, While I wait for my, nice my psychic. Well, actually, I, the, my, I did not get to work with, with him on the set. But I saw him walking around at the premiere, oh. and I was like, "Jesus, who's that scary dude with the giant coat and a top hat?" Well, he was Whatever. up on the roof. We were on the roof together. Were you briefly. there when I was there? Yes. For a second. There was a lot going on. Did I get your sound on that roof? Try to get. Check. Mic there, check. there we go. <laughs> yeah, we were. It was it. There was a balcony, sort of right. That balcony area yeah. where the kid falls. Great off. voice, by the way. What's you that? A, you have a great voice, dude. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I noticed that. Yeah. Do you want any? Do you want any action figures? <laughs> <laughs> you want a sword? You'd be good with a sword. Get some swords off you. Yeah, yeah that'd be great. Yeah, he's the perfect one. Um, so he plays the boyfriend of the screwball wife. Would that be about yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. They had me do a, a play an uh, amateur hockey player with a Russian accent. Have so. you guys really acted, funny. acted anything really else funny. together? Oh, have you guys been other films together? Or anything? Or? No, this was the first one. Hopefully first of many would be great. Yeah. Uh, super talented. You were, you were great in the film. Oh, I thought wow. you were, you were awesome. You. you brought Thank a lot. You. Yeah. I was just telling you, because something about her acting on the screen, it was like, I want more of that. Totally. Yeah, yeah it was addictive for sure. Yeah. The, my guys. eyes were following you the whole yeah. time. Your mouth yeah. to the... Yeah. To the, <laughs> the casting director's yeah. ears. ears. <laughs> the man's ears. Was it last show that you said you had... I consulted with Bobcat and Judd on yeah. something, and then yeah. they made you feel bad. Everything makes me feel bad. <laughs> yeah, they, people have expectations that are too high, and I what can't live Bobcat up to it. What did Bobcat say? I never, you never told Bobcat me made it real clear. He goes, "This is going to be good, and you, it needs to be cinematic." And that's why I went out and that's bought it? cinema lenses said? for six thousand dollars that I don't know how to operate. And <laughs> the Judd stuff was personal, but then the worst part was I all I can't talk about the Netflix phone call. You, yeah, yeah, yeah. You already but did. I just, I'm like, this is too supportive. I don't need. I, I can't live up to these so, expectations. So how are we gonna? I truly can't. How are we gonna reframe? There's all no this? way I can call a net a, a company like that, and I have somebody very high up go come in tomorrow, and I'll give you money. How are we gonna go? Re- like is this? this is great. Shame? It's yeah. Well, it's the same. Yeah, shame. The shame is a lot of its shame, and whatever mommy did or didn't do that shamed the hell out of him. I hate that term, mommy. <laughs> You hate everything. Sort of, sounds so horrible. Hate everything. Mommy. <laughs> yeah. You wish you had one. Um, I like going out to dinner with you. I love it. I know that. Mm-hmm. Just know so that. you know. I'm just giving you yeah. shit. I like it when you go out to dinner with him, too. Takes, gets, me out, gets me out of her hair. No, he needs a friend. <laughs> Wait, I do? 
<laughs> we all do. I do. We all need a friend. Who, me? Me? We're all like, what? <laughs> Who's <laughs> what? Do you guys like us over there? <laughs> um, no, he, does, he doesn't go out with guys or pals very often. And it's, you know, he, we're together all the time. So, I mean, it's yeah. fine when we're together. But Cut right. to, we're just at a gangbang the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> this is the best. Right. Oh, My wife I said she likes so. it. What are you going to do, Mike? Please. <laughs> Please. <laughs> um, Mary Lynn. Yes. Honestly, I adore you. Oh my like god! Like from a like, I don't mean like in a creepy way. <laughs> Unless there's a chance. Unless like there's a chance. Then. No, but I, I re- gang, every time, I, every, <laughs> even <laughs> from the Mister Show days up until now, I'm always happy when I see you, and it's it sort. I think it's sort of insp- it is inspiring. I'm trying not to be weird, but um, I'm always like, I love that you do what you do. And and that your personality comes through, and Thank it makes you. me want to be. A, a no, but I'm I'm being I'm being serious. Like it's really cool when you to watch you on stage, and it's like, it's you. It's a you know a stageified version of you off stage, and I like that. And and you're Doing you're it for a long time, you're huh? sort of shy and sort of. I, I'm sorry to use the word awkward, but a little awkward off stage. Pretty and, awkward. But but it's it's not in a in a way that makes other people uncomfortable. It's uh, it probably makes people comfortable. Actually, yeah, it's like oh, I can, I don't have to be the only person that's not super comfortable <laughs> talking. They to can people. relate, yeah. yeah, they can relate for sure. I found that too. Just your performance. I'm sure the super well built, buff, good looking guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> Wasn't always as I'm way, sucking though. in my stomach. <laughs> Do you have anything else coming up? Um, I got Alpha. I did a movie called Alpha Wolf, which will be coming out by the end of the year. Uh, it's like a, a werewolf movie. Um, uh yeah, so that's coming out. So like a like a horror film. That's nice. it. Yeah. Um a couple in, in talks with some stuff. So I've, I've signed a few NDAs. Uh N NDA, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Non disclosure. Yeah. So yeah, some stuff coming up for sure. Definitely. Hey, I have to quickly go back to this nurse's note, which is sitting in front of me bothering me. Okay. The other thing she said is uh maybe and I have to and, and then uh Mary Lynn's gonna have to go because yes. she has a hard out, but yes, yes. then we're gonna also get Bob on the phone a little Bob bit Sagan. later. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but maybe she says, maybe abstinence-based therapy is working for him. What do I know? I guess I'm thinking of the bigger picture. He's not on abstinence-based therapy. That was exactly what I was talking to him about, is that he was taking his his replacement therapy inappropriately. I never heard of a doctor prescribing it the way he was taking it, but if that's how the doctor was prescribing it, I can't argue with that. But that, I'm so angry at these, these misconceptions. I love about that that's stuck in your brain. I know. And I'm like, I have a lot of stuff, too. Can we start over? <laughs> <laughs> Driving here for one. So Mike, Mike, I like the designer as, a, aspect of that pillow in the middle of the, the thing. Is that a bad place to put it? <laughs> I, I, I honestly uh, felt like I, he was going to feel like it was a barrier. Like, like uh, okay, cool. It gives, me, it gives me a chance to do the old... <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to my set. Mike takes <laughs> off, drives away. <laughs> so, I, what am I doing? Am I wrapping up? Yeah. I, well, we're gonna yeah, take a break. Are we yeah, taking a break? Take a break, and right. then. But I do want to um, thank you know do everybody's plugs and make sure we. Have well, them. give me you give Grace's. Is that her name Grace? Well, we did Grace. Okay, Grace so thank died. you to Grace. Uh, hey, is this part of the show where you guys have a personal conversation? Yeah. I have no, no. I have no, nobody. As soon as I have nobody stops, so I have nothing I know to, you're you're winging. Everybody it today, gets to baby. give their own. Materials. Hey guys, I'm Marilyn Rice Cub. You may remember me from a few seconds. No, ago. No, no, but I mean, <laughs> what's, coming, what's coming up? What's coming up? Anything other than that? I think I mentioned all mine. Okay. Doing night school. I did Benjamin right, Mike, Marilyn ahead. Rice Cub? Check. I got uh, what's coming up for me? Yeah. Nothing much, really. You can cleaning out your house. Cleaning out my house. Yeah. Selling some swords. Follow the Instagram. Miscellaneous Instagram. Adventures from the World of My Chrono podcast Find where I walk on around Dr. and talk into my phone for two or three hours. Yeah. And is that now, is that prescription subscription or is that... Uh, iTunes. Yeah. iTunes. You, you subscribe to it. The After Disaster. Okay. Right. Get a prescription. This to pod- his his pod- I'm doing way too many podcasts right now. He's going to be hanging out here. Got three more. today. Got one tomorrow. Got Dana Gould on Tuesday. Yeah. Good. You never you get tired of complaining. Too many. I don't. <laughs> is, that, is that what I come across as? We, <laughs> the guy that just comes to complain? <laughs> and then we've got everybody stopped. All right. We'll, All right. So we'll take a break, and then we'll come back with Bob right, Saget. Perfect. I want to mention our friends at Bergamot Sport, a supplement that provides all the cardiovascular benefits of the original Bergamot, but with additional additives designed to aid athletes and those with active lifestyles. Bergamot Sport is recommended and used by professional and college athletes throughout the world, helps them improve stamina, reduce recovery time, and muscle inflammation. Bergamot Sport is informed sport certified, so athletes can feel confident that it's all natural and it has been banned substance tested. But even if you're not a pro athlete or just getting a workout once a week or so, Bergamot Sport is still worth a try. It can help you work out harder, recover easier, without worrying about being sore or tired the next day. 
I've used the products myself. I've recommended them to patients. We use them in our family. And I've done so just as physicians and cardiologists around the world have done. And Bergamot Plus is excellent for what's called non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, which has just passed all other forms of liver disease in terms of causing cirrhosis. So it's something that is so it's something that is a major health issue presently and needs to be paid attention to. For a limited time, our listeners can save 10% on their order by entering code DRDREW at checkout. That is D-R-D-R-E-W, all one word. Try Bergamot Sport for yourself. Visit bergamot.com. That is B-E-R-G-A-M-E-T.com. Or just click the Bergamot banner at drdrew.com. And we are back. Uh, we are here now with a very special guest, Bob Saget. Hey, man. Yeah, I'm so happy to be here. Thank you, Drew, for having me Bob on. very kindly had me in his film, Benjamin. I will not tell mm-hmm. you how or why. I've already uh, told you that's a secret. But uh, we had a great time filming it, and they were very kind to me. And me and Bob Ford. Well, it was very kind of you to do it. And you're a spoiler alert and a secret cameo. But they won't know where it happens. It's like <laughs> Waldo or Carmen Santiago. No one will know where it happens. It happens I love so when you fast. say in a public forum, I already told you it's a secret. That just makes people <laughs> more angry. It's the first thing he brings up. But I'm, I'm glad he did because I, called, I emailed him and he said yes right away. And that's the sign of a guy that is just a good guy. And normally, so. Bob, this, this podcast is uh, – Bob Forrest is my co-host on this podcast. But Mike Ronald is sitting in today. So. So I know you got to know Bob during the filming because he was in the film too, believe it or yeah. not. Uh, Another spoiler alert. You're doubling down. <laughs> yeah. but, but, but you won't know why. So it's very- but, but the movie is um, – it's interesting with, because you – you know, it's part of your wheel. It is your wheelhouse. Yeah, it's yeah. Of, it's a dysfunctional family yeah. who's – um, you know, some you find out everyone else is the problem, not the person that you think. My 15 year old boy in the movie, I directed it and I played the father in this wonderful ensemble that James Preston Rogers was amazing in. James Dillon. And, um, and it's, uh, I'll, just, I'll riff the names off because I want to. It's Rob Cordry who plays the family gynecologist. Uh, Cro- and he leads the Cross intervention. And, and that is not how you do an intervention. You yeah. don't have. A gyno, uh, just randomly do it as a favor. But Mary Lynn Rice Cub, who was on uh, with you guys earlier yep. today, I know. Yep. Uh, she's wonderful as my girlfriend, and she she posts on Facebook there's going to be an intervention. Mm-hmm. So um, that's also not how you go about it, right, Drew? That's you don't not do that. how you go about it. No. Nope. And then and, you've got. And then it was. Uh, and she sleeps with was, your brother. Was, yeah, that yeah, was uh, a triple idiot. spoiler alert. That's yeah. a, another spoiler, Bob. That's three. Who played your? <laughs> well, we're gonna. Well, it's Kevin Pollock and it's Sherry O'Terry and Dave Foley and Perry Gilpin and Claire Mamet and um, and Johnny Weston and David Hull who blew the screen up and uh, and you James and I think I just covered everybody. Yeah. Lyric, and Lyric Bent. Nice. Is that the kid? Oh, Lyric Bent. Yes. Is that the, the kid? Uh, the yes. Boy? Another surprise. And yeah. and it just was an, a wonderful ensemble thing. We had a very short shoot. Indie film, you know, and uh, we had a premiere at the Beverly Hills Film Festival, and that's where I got to see you guys. And uh, it was a really it, wonderful screening, and it was written by a guy, Joshua Turek, about a dysfunctional family, but it's a dark comedy. And to get laughs out of that, it's like we were talking before we started this podcast, uh, I mean, live streaming show, I mean, whatever this is. Mm-hmm. Um, Straight to video. What is this? Yeah. Well, how would you define this, Drew? Podcast. Podcast. What if it uh, wasn't intervention? You're like, this is really not the way to do it. <laughs> yeah. Stay where you're at. We'll be there in 40 minutes. Yeah. We're on our way. Did you direct Half Baked, Bob? Yeah, Half Baked is, is that's where that's when I finally flipped the Danny Tanner image upside down and scared people. But I was directing a movie, Dirty Work, with Norm. Oh, yeah, the Norm movie. Yeah, <laughs> Artie Lang, Artie Lang, who could use your help, Drew. Oh, I know, I know Artie well. Uh, yeah. yeah. He's and, a sweet man. Yes, he is. And uh, Bob lit up the, the one of his producers, I think, of this film, of Benjamin, produced Aristocrats. Great. Right? Right? Great. Was he officially your producer or your business partner? He, he was producer of Aristocrats. Well, Nick, Nicholas Tabarrok yeah. was the producer. Yes. Yeah. Do you know Nicholas? A little bit. Great dude. dude yeah, he's a good up. guy. I love Nicholas. And, uh, and Joshua and he and I held on to the script and got it made. And we were very, very happy. Guy Jeff Sackman um, and Barry Meyerowitz put up the, the dough and, um, and believed in it. And Jeff, I'd worked on Jeff, uh, exec produced the aristocrats, which is a good family film. Yep. Well, but especially, then, especially Bob's contribution. Very, yeah. very, very. No, between you, you and Stanhope, you, you and Stanhope are like, you want, that's when you're like, 
maybe they crossed a line. <laughs> yeah, right. And if it came out right now, it'd be hashtag not me. You know? <laughs> and, and you know how um, you know Stanhope used to bust my balls so badly. Uh, it, well, that's an understatement. I I did the forward to his book. I know. I got it. It was crazy. I got it. I just did the yeah. the, uh, the audio version of it yeah. a couple of days ago. And you did the forward. You didn't do the uh, written version of of his book. No, I did. I wrote the forward. Yeah, and was, I, I literally I thought heard the whole book was printed on rolling papers. Is that true? <laughs> no, I don't think it was rolling papers. I'm not sure what that stuff was. But that's a very good book. It's a very good book, right? I'm only and, like uh, ten pages it, into it. It, it's, it, it, I, it talks I, about his, his roots and what drove him to be a comedian and. It's uh, it's this is the I'm not famous or it's um. Tales from the Edge is really what it but is. But it's it's not. Uh, what's the name? Of, what's the subtitle of that book? Of his book? It just came out, right? Doug's book? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I can't remember. Yeah, I've, 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 I've got it. It might be in my phone. But I've got the actual manuscript here. <laughs> no, it. I think it's in my in my audio books. <laughs> but anyway, you get, please get the book. It's very good. Um, and Bob, before. I'll find it. Before the mics heated up, you mentioned you asked me some question about what's troubling me these days with uh, the op- This is not fame. That's what it's called. Yeah, this yeah, is not fame. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, what's troubling me about the uh, world, and of course, opiates are troubling me. But we we are finally getting somewhere. Finally getting somewhere. I swear to God, we're going to have a the next data that reads that becomes public is going to be a marked drop off in prescribing. And so hey, there's going to be a lot more regulation. There's going to be regulation, but the regulation hasn't even hit yet. But the the amount of fear that Jeff Sessions put into the medical community finally got them to change, and uh, and that's good. It needed to happen. That's the way it goes. It, it's been out of control for way too long. Have you heard of kratom? Kratom is just another opiate. Yeah. They, they're going to regulate that eventually. Okay. It's like a weak opiate. Yeah. So are doctors at fault for prescribing stuff just to get yes. off, just to get patients out of their office? Yes. That's part of it. There's a million other reasons, but that was part of it, yes. And also not to call in for more prescriptions and not to call you – know, In the beginning, back. you were probably like, I have the greatest doctor in history. Oh, that's what people would say, and then they'd keep coming back. They, they behave like great patients. And the, uh, the, the other problem is for all the people that have mental health issues, and that is – and I had a sister that passed away at 34 years old, and mm-hmm. she, she was uh, schizophrenic, and she had a, a rough life, and – you know, they, they, that was all old school drugs, but they would just pull the rug out just like they did. And that's how we lost Robin Williams. They would pull the rug out on all, your whole regime. They don't titrate you down. Wouldn't and be, they put you on brand new stuff. To be fair, Rob, Robin had Louis body dementia. I knew that too. And, and that at the end, he was emaciated, Parkinsonian, and couldn't communicate. That was all from to, to, Louis body. You go down hard and fast. It's but terrible. wasn't that due to the heart surgery? No, no, or? no, no. He had stri- he had actual Louis body dementia. But didn't you tell so me? So Drew, that? you're saying I had been told something that's not true. Then correct, it, it correct. Was not a flip. It was not a flip of the whole drug regime. Co- correct. It was. It was people. There was a rumor, and then his wife finally came forward with the formal diagnosis, and then that makes sense because when you, when you have Louis body dementia, and then Bobcat. If you talk to Bobcat, he will he will. He has the most hair-raising story about what happened to him. They, they literally become psychotic and hallucinatory and panicky all the time, all the while with their cognition just deteriorating rapidly. It's the worst. It's the sounds, worst. Sounds awful. Is and it always a fast deterioration? Usually, yeah. It's pretty fast. And, it's such uh, a tragic loss. Oh, my God. It was terrible. And it's really, you should have Bobcat. I did a pod- podcast with Bobcat once where he told me the whole story. It was it was breathtaking. It was. It, I'll it, talk to him, and I'll yeah. listen to your podcast yeah. also. Yeah, it was unbelievable. Yeah, poor Bobcat. I, I didn't know he was also his best friend. I mean, they yeah. were close friends yeah. and stuff. Well, and, well, and, yeah, very close. Yeah. Bob's the closest. I'm, I mean, he's my closest comic. He, he said, Bob, that uh, Robin would call him like every five minutes. We, on the phone. When we were on the road for two weeks shooting a documentary, Bobcat called Robin every single day. Well, he would call every – but, he, but yeah. he later, Robin started calling every five minutes. Yeah. Like I, I'm seeing things, I'm losing my mind. Am I okay, Bob? Am I okay? Am I okay? Am I okay? And there's nothing to be done. It's just one yeah. of those. But I thought you things. told me at one point in time there was a correlation between open heart surgery and depression. Well, the, the original story was he committed suicide, if you remember. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so what we did, we went around and said, well, open heart surgery, risk for suicide. Middle aged white male, risk for suicide. History of alcoholism, risk of suicide. Recent relapse, big risk of re, re, of suicide. And I think he had a, maybe a previous attempt or something. There was some other thing to put him at risk. There were little, attempt. there were little yeah. scratches in his wrist. He was yeah. trying to, he was trying not to do it. I think by doing minor acts of yeah. violence to himself, yeah. and then initially, then eventually yeah. he did the horrible. 
it, the thing it, that I hear is true that he put the little shoelaces around his neck or something yeah. on a doorknob, yeah. something like that. But but in the condition he was in, not an unreasonable thing. How does one get there? To and where, everybody to where, said to where he got. that I talked to Rick Overton and Bob Cat said that that wasn't Robin. Virus? They said the man yeah. that died yeah. that day was not Robin. Probably a prion disease, and it, and it just just eats through the brain. Is it genetic? So, no, it's, no, it's no. virus. It's it's a, a, well, like, I, again, it's prion. Prion. These things are they're not they're like infecting agents, but it's not like you're going to catch it from somebody. And uh, so no one knows for sure exactly how it's triggered oh, yeah. when they get it. So, so. Oh. but there, you know, there's the, it's one of the main, you know, it's, it's lower percentages, but one of the big three, you know, there's frontal temporal dementia, there's Alzheimer's, and there's Lewy body dementia. Those are the big three. Jeez. And uh, Lewy body is just that's a, that's a nightmare. It's a nightmare. It's terrible. Oh, it's terrible. Wow. Yeah, sit my stand in my shoes for a few times. You get to see lots of nightmares oh. all day long, every day. <laughs> it's good times. Oh, but um, in the, on the opiate side, Bob, we, we're making progress. Uh, the heroin story is still going to be out there and big and a problem. And we're, the fentanyl story is yet to even fully play out. People are getting uh, sort of uh, counterfeit tablets, Xanax tablets, which Mike wants to be, press out as many as he can. <laughs> you can pass it with the idea that you could buy a pill. I've been sober for six and a half years. I just thought it was intriguing that you can make your own pills at home. <laughs> and, and I, putting... I, I have one prescription that's six years old, just, just just in case I have a panic attack and think it's a heart attack. But nice. That... I don't I just like didn't... it. And then, right, really, I mean, people are taking Vicodin all the time, mm-hmm. yeah. constantly. And you know, and um, you, have pan- you have panic attacks, Bob? Do I have what? Panic attacks? Uh Rarely, I'm having yeah. one right now because you're so handsome. Because I'm bringing them up, <laughs> but but I uh, I'm, just, I'm fighting my true feelings. No, right I, now. I had panic attacks in college, severe disabling panic. I, then I've had general anxiety my whole life. But the panic right. attacks are really rough. So what do you do for that? Well, I had years of therapy. Uh, I was mismanaged terribly. I think one of the things that got me interested in mental health, particularly youthful mental health, because there was no adolescent health care then, and um, it, it was just something that. Um, you know, I, I think I got used to. I sort of learned how to tolerate, and then I got therapy later and kind of got out of it. But the, but the point being is that uh, I'm doing a lot of work on stigma right now, and it's important for all of us that have had mental health symptoms or conditions speak up about it. Doesn't 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 define us. Doesn't have to stigmatize. And there's no. No, no reason to treat conditions above the neck differently than diseases below the neck. It's all I'm saying. So right, no, I like when they're combined. Well, we got that for you. We, we, we can combine them for you, Bob. You just got to make sure I can do that sit-up all the way forward. And then, of course, you never want to leave the house at that point. Bob, guess what? You're off the hook. This is all we had to do is a few minutes here. And so I just wanted to say hi. But I want to talk more. What do you want to talk about? I don't know. How do we help all these people that don't know that they got to stop doing crystal meth and oh. stop taking all these pills well, and they're not that a lot of them like i saw them last night performing they're so messed up that they're not uh that intelligent about it and yeah. they don't care they have no regard i know we're in a place right now where it feels like our millennials and our gen x just care less yeah they just want to have everything handed to them and the rest they don't want to feel one moment of pain well bob and i had a long talk about i mean mike and i had a long talk about making meaning that people need to make meaning from things we're in a bit of a spiritual vacuum we need to sort of fill ourselves with important yeah. things and important people hey, i get it as a you know as Recovery a guy, guy that's been six and a half years sober i get wanting to wanting to fucking make that shit go away and i also get when you go to a poorer part of town or a place like the salton sea or a place like joshua tree what else are you going to do there but get fucked up yeah like what it's such a boring oh place. no but you're supposed to get centered and see yeah. how <laughs> but there's no there's there's no incentive like you you know you're poor i'm stuck in joshua tree i live in a trailer what what i don't see a great i have an idea for you me. and me why don't we do a road trip and and just drink some green alcohol out there Okay. Uh, you're six years sober. <laughs> we flip you. Drew brings you back. Everything's fine. It's and you had a weird it. experience. You fell off the wagon with me for just a couple of days. I think. I think. And I, then I, Drew's. A, a, he's a shaman. He I'm can a, cure. Officially, going to keep all my patients away from Bob Sack. Officially, <laughs> <laughs> my policy. Is my Drew, I'm going to get er, all of your patients really screwed up, oh and then god. you'll have more work. Oh god! <laughs> Thank you. But I'll man. only do the rich patients, so they, you'll make a ton of money. Were enough. You get work. out of this freaking basement but but to your (laughs) to your point um the the thing that people could do is just show up at a 12-step meeting it's all you have to do or a smart recovery or whatever you want some mutual aid society 
You just show up and raise your hand and ask for help. It's free. It works. It's available. May not be all you need. Do you know how hard be, that is? You know what? And, and part of the problem is we don't have people to put a hand yeah. on somebody's shoulder and take them to a meeting. Because because going to a meeting, me saying go to a meeting, when they've studied this, when a doctor says go to a meeting, the probability of the meeting attendance is about zero. If, on the other hand, I go, hey, I want you to meet Mike. Mike, would you take him to a meeting? You know, give me his phone number. Go outside and talk yeah. about it for a minute and figure out a time to meet. I don't even mean the, necessarily. I'm just the, saying it's about, 80, about, it's about 70%. I'm not talking about the logistics. I'm talking about the Good. I want to be high, I want to be drunk. And then me going, you know what? I can get rid of all these good feelings and just go to a meeting. That's almost impossible. It, well, but of course you have to have the insight. How's your life going right now? Yeah, yeah. you have to have that insight. Your, yeah. your life is falling apart. Yep. It could be better. I know you like how you feel. I know you like yeah. you love your drugs, but your life's fucked up, and you can't. You don't get both. Let me just say, and something. alcohol is, is still one of the biggest. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. What you and it's the combo of those. That's what we're going to do at Joshua Tree. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> what's, no, <laughs> what's that, Mike? I'm just going to fill a bottle of George Dickel with <laughs> with all kinds of pills. I don't, I don't even know what, know what that is, but uh, <laughs> pills that Mike has pressed out himself. It's Michael. the cheapest whiskey that exists. Okay. No, it's not. Okay. I'm sure there's cheaper. But what's up? You're trying to say something? I forgot what okay. it was. We're going to wrap this up, <laughs> Bob. Thank you very much. My producer is like giving me the high sign. I love you, Drew. Thanks, Bob. And and we're going to go out to dinner. I'm going to buy you some drugs and some alcohol. And we're going to See, I, I'm not in recovery, so we can go do that. <laughs> okay, good. All right, and buddy. then we'll go to a meeting. Oh, which reminds me, one thing I want to say, I want, I want to, be, because I have panic, I, I think it came from, I had some cannabis right around the time that I got the panic. I think it may have contributed. But I want to try it again. I'm going to do it as a documentary thing. Mike, maybe you should shoot this. And if I get panic, I'm going to be pissed. But maybe somebody can advise me on which ones to take that don't have panic. I thought you were just going to say, remember the time I went out with you and your lawyer and she kept trying to give me drinks? Wow. <laughs> wow. Was she like no, you? All right. She wanted no, to put you down. No, we what's, were, the, what's the most wait, screwed up wait, thing wait, you ever wait, did, Drew? Wait, what lawyer? He went, we went out. It was to one, the, one of the Anahita? H- H- yeah, Anahita yeah. went out. We went out. We went out. She kept drink. ordering me shots. And he's going, like, here, what are you doing? Michael, She's like, you can't just have one? We went to his comedy club. It's like, what? Oh, yeah. oh, was this the last show you did? No, this was, this wasn't our, couple, our thing. This so it's Anahita, huh? Uh-huh. So this is more than five years ago. This Uh-oh. is like no, six, this is like no, a couple, months, couple ago. months ago. Yeah. yeah. Uh oh. Oh, so you're doing great, and you're glad to broadcast this. No, I'm like, what the fuck? It was, it was distressing. It was Next disturbing. podcast called the Doghouse. <laughs> yeah. Right. All right, buddy. Bob Saget. Thanks All right. So much. Thank, Thank you, you, you Bob. You're awesome, buddy. All right, man. See you later, miss you, James. Yeah, I'll talk to you guys soon. And Joshua Tree in the future with uh, let's, alcohol. Let's and, go uh, right. Now. Let's go on. now. Mike's out. I'm going. I'll go yeah. right now. If you love the show, tell a friend. We'd love your feedback. Just head over to doctor.com slash survey. Answer a few questions there. It'll help us continue to make the show better. Just five minutes of your time could really make a difference for us. That's drdrew.com slash survey. Uh, thank you for supporting the show. We'll also, also, very importantly, go to drdrew.com and click through on the Hydrolyte banner. You get 30% off your purchase with the code DREW18 at checkout. This, of course, is a great product. Susan and I use it all the time. It is oral rehydration. I had an illness about two weeks ago. It saved my ass. And if you also want to get some prices on Bergamot, uh, the banner at Dr.com can give you a discount as well there when you click through. We are proud to have these interesting products, amazing products, in fact, uh, available through the website at a discounted price. Again, I've recommended several times in the last two weeks for non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. It is a seriously important supplement. Keep you healthy in 2018. Also, check out Midday Live on six. Also, check out Midday Live uh, on KBC 790, myself and Lawrence Savon, Monday through Friday. We are syndicated also in the Bay Area as well as in Los Angeles, noon to 3 Pacific time, Talk Radio 790. Also, tune in every day live via the internet on kbc.com. If you miss it, we made it simple for you to find the shows in podcast form at drdrew.com next to all the other podcasts, including me and Adam, the Adam and Dr. Drew Show, the Dr. Drew, the Swole Patrol, or Weekly Infusion. Check out the family of pods. We appreciate it so, so much. Remember, you can find all these podcasts at drdrew.com. The Dr. Drew podcast, the This Life podcast, and the Adam and Drew podcast, which is available five days a week. Find them all on iTunes and rate us five stars. Subscribe and get it first. And if you're really happy, click on the Amazon banner at drdrew.com to help support the show. We'll thank you for it. 
If you join the email list via drdrew.com slash contact, we'll send you a weekly infusion newsletter with Dr. Drew's News. We're so grateful when you get in touch. We read all your emails and we'll bring you the subject matter you want to hear about. You lived. <laughs>